I'm Anthony Padilla and I'm curious. What would you do if you realized the label you were assigned at birth falsely predetermined every element of a life you could never see yourself living? I spent today with trans men who came to that very conclusion. We'll uncover the truth about giving birth as a teen mother and then later transitioning to a father and how that impacts a child. And from someone who's presented as a woman and a man, a deeply polarizing topic of newly found male privilege. Hello. Hey, you? how's it going? Jesse. Hi. Ty. Anthony. And this episode is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Visit betterhelp.com slash Padilla because sometimes existing is exhausting. Now, can you define what transgender means? It's anyone who identifies as a gender that's different than what was assigned to them at birth. It feels like you were born in the wrong skin suit. Everything on the inside feels right. It's just the outside. Can you define what trans man is? We are men who were assigned female at birth and transition to uh, male. Do you remember the moment when you first had some kind of realization like this, this thing, this doesn't feel right? Oh yeah, Anthony. <laughs> oh, you know it's getting deep when they say my name. Here it is. Ever since I was a little girl, mm -hmm. I knew something was fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I was always referred to as a tomboy as a little kid, so I thought I was a type of boy. I was like, yeah, that makes sense. I'm like, you get it. Yeah, I, yeah, in my mind, a tomboy was a boy that was a girl. I was raised like super religious, and mom would sit us on the bathroom counter every Sunday and get us ready for church. And as soon as she started curling my hair and putting bows in and dress, I would just bawl my eyes out when I was like four years old. I was feeling like, no, I'm a boy, this is wrong. Yeah. And then they're putting a dress on me. That's the thing that I'm identifying as wrong. Like as I got older and my body was maturing, then it became this deeper thing. Like physically, mm -hmm. the shapes and the skin and the everything feels wrong because mm -hmm. now I can identify that that's what that is. And I, I didn't even know the word transgender until I was an adult. I didn't even know that existed. I thought I was the only person in the world. And I remember like literally crying in my pillow at night. So I would beg God like, please just tomorrow I'll wake up and I'm, I'm a boy. Like the sixth or seventh grade. Our teacher comes in and says, hey everyone, we're gonna learn about puberty today. All the guys stay here and all the girls are gonna leave and go to another room. So I stayed there. I was like, okay, like I'm ready. Let's hear about, you know, whatever this puberty thing is about. She said, hey, what are you still doing here? Like you should have been gone with all the other girls. I ended up going to the room with the girls. We watched some, you know, cheesy 90s video about what happens, you know, when females have puberty and all that. Honestly, my first thought was, this is terrible. <laughs> like, like this is, Just, this this is terrible. Is this is much. a terrible thing. You know what? It's not even real. It's not even real. This type of thing does no, not happen. Absolutely. I thought Everyone was just making stuff up. I was in such disbelief. And I remember even making a comment to my friend like, ha, y'all are gonna have periods. <laughs> there was such a disconnect between, again, like how people viewed me versus how I viewed myself. In school, they would have us line up in a boy's line and a girl's line to go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. I refused to line up with the girls. Mm -hmm. And eventually it got to the point where this was an everyday thing and my parents had to have a talk with me. It was cute, you know, but <laughs> it's time to be real. I am a girl and I have to, I have to function like one. And so when that happened, I was like, okay, well, I have a crush on one of my friends who's a girl, but boys date girls, so mm -hmm. what's going on there? Me not realizing the weight of the fact that I had just came out. So I'm just like, no, no, never mind. Like I, I had no idea how bad all this stuff was that I was feeling. It was tough. I mean, it definitely took a toll on me. It, I, I had a lot of anxiety issues that manifested in different ways. Around the time that I started puberty, I developed facial tics. I think it was just generalized anxiety from all that, you know, suppressing everything and then having that the, the change of my body confirming that I don't have any choice in this situation. I'm, I'm stuck in this body, in this role, right. and it's gonna happen to me this way, whether I want it to or not. What do you think were some of the toughest parts about puberty and, and having to really face throughout that time? The periods are an obvious one, because mm -hmm. that's like, every month and it's like a horror movie. It's blood and it's, mm. you know, you gotta deal with it. You can't write this stuff. What's, <laughs> what's, what's the worst way to remind someone of what, what's going on down there? Just flood it with blood, <laughs> send it off. Puberty hit and that was probably one of the hardest times of my entire life. Even when I like got my period, I didn't tell one soul because to me it literally felt like the worst punishment God could have given me. Like did you, did you try to justify why 
God was doing this to you? Yeah, I think I thought like, oh, because I had crushes on girls and stuff. I was raised so Catholic. Like we went to these like churches where you gave confession on stage in front of people. I would like remember thinking like, oh my God, hell's gonna hurt. What kind of thoughts went through your head when you realized that you liked girls and you were not going to be at least the sexuality, not what people expected you to be? I think at the time I just, I was scared. I was like, I, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can be out and open at school. I don't know if I can be out and open with my parents. It's just this idea of like how much more complicated my life is gonna get by like accepting this and like actually living it. I feel like there were a lot of cards against me with actually like being able to live in my truth with that. First thing being my religion, you know, super, super Catholic. There was my culture where being an immigrant from sort of like an Afro-European background, like, that was just not accepted. And that is the background that your parents came from, that is the culture that your parents uh, were taught was the way that the world mm -hmm. is. Yeah, and I mean, obviously living with them, that bleeds into my own views, my own thoughts. So I'm thinking, you know, this is the last thing I need to be. When did you first hear about the term trans? I started making all these gay friends and I started meeting trans people. And that's when I first started understanding like all those things that I've been told my whole life of like, oh, this is what a trans person is, you know, the word tranny and like how they're portrayed in movies and everything. I was like, oh my God, that is not at all what it is. And what these people are telling me is exactly what I feel. So that was the first moment that I was like, whoa. I was in high school. I came to terms with myself that I liked girls. I was looking up what LGBT stands for. Cause I was like, I don't really feel like an L. You know? <laughs> I never called myself a lesbian cause I didn't feel like a girl that liked other girls. Mm. I would always just say, I like girls. And I found transgender. I had no idea what it was. Mm. So I got on YouTube as one does mm -hmm. and I found trans men, their voices dropping, they're getting hairy, they're getting beards, mm -hmm. they're getting muscles. And I was like, close the laptop, pushed away, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. terrified because it struck something within me. I want to be hairy. I want to be muscular. <laughs> I want the hairiest butt. <laughs> I go to therapy, a gender therapist specifically. You know, I've been having these issues. I'm not comfortable in my body. I don't feel comfortable being called a lesbian. She literally like looks at me and she says like, you have every single factor of having dysphoria. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, no, no. And she's like, yes, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much after that session, I started doing research reddit.com, you know, where everything is super. <laughs> Very accurate information. <laughs> Just second to urbandictionary.com. I was like, okay, a, licensed professional has told me this. I've always sort of known all of this, but repressed it. So now's the time to live my life. Two years when I found out that transition was an option and something that existed when I was 14, up until 16, I was aware, but suppressing it, trying my best to get around it and see what I could do to be happy as a girl, mm. be a masculine woman. When we moved away in high school, I started completely dressing as a guy. Short hair, guys clothes only, mm. like very much presenting masculine to where everyone thought I was a guy and I felt great. I was the happiest that I ever was when I was there. As I came to terms with being trans, all of those things started to make sense. Once you just allow yourself to feel how you actually feel, there's just so much peace. Was it more difficult to come out to yourself or to others? Definitely others. By the time I like finally accepted this, I was so ready. Mm. It was like, I couldn't wait one more day. I felt this like insane amount of pride in who I was. Yeah. I came out in the kind of an interesting way because I um, just decided I wasn't going to tell anybody. I was just going to do it on my own. I just posted it on Instagram. <laughs> and I mean, within 20 minutes, my phone started ringing every sibling. They were not happy. It was like, why did you tell us? How did I have to find out this way? And I was like, it wasn't for you. It was for me. And I, this is exactly why I did it. Coming out to my parents was the hardest thing I've ever done. I craft this text message up for a couple weeks, was thinking, okay, when I come out to them, I'm gonna get disowned. I'm gonna find have to find housing somewhere else. Like I drove short while away to this park where I felt like 100% safe. Like, and I sent this long text message. I had my car packed up with every single belonging I ever owned. You were prepared to never have to go back if they never wanted to see you again. Yeah, unfortunately. After a, a grueling 10 minutes of 
waiting to see the response. Which felt like an eternity. Literally, they responded back to me and they said, you know, hey, we may not understand this, but we love you. Let's talk when we get home. And I was like, oh, I'm going home today. The first person I came out to was my mom mm -hmm. on accident. How does that happen? We were in the car and somehow the conversation came up about trans people. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I've been watching these guys on YouTube mm -hmm. and it's amazing. They go on testosterone, they look great, they have muscles, they have a deep voice, mm -hmm. and it happens so quickly, and you'd never know. And she's like, oh, is that what you want to do? And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what? <laughs> and I was like, you know, yeah, I think I do. What does transitioning entail? It used to be a lot more methodical. You go on T for a year, top surgery. You continue T and then maybe somewhere down the line, 10 years in, bottom surgery. Now, it's not so much like that. A lot of people are doing their own thing. For me, it's been almost 10 years of testosterone. I haven't had any surgeries yet, but I want surgeries. Mm. A lot of people think transition as a whole, the yeah. entire process is go to the doctor's office. Yeah, snip, snap, snip, snip snap, 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 snip, snap, snap. <laughs> you have no idea the toll. And then you come out and oh. a completely different new gender. Mm. But the reason that people would want to wait uh, there's a lot of reasons, I think. Mm. For me, a lot of it has to do with wanting to be in the right spot in my life. Surgery takes a big toll. You're gonna be down for a while. Mm -hmm. Takes a lot of money, time, um, research. It's a big life decision. How often do you get asked about surgery? All the time, especially if it's someone I haven't seen in a while. And they're like, oh, Jesse, I saw you transition. Are you getting bottom surgery? People literally do that. <laughs> I'll kind of laugh it off and I'll be like, you know, you really shouldn't say that to trans people, but no, I'm not. What if I just walked up to cis people and started asking about their genitalia? <laughs> like, that doesn't happen. When some people hear that people don't feel like the gender that they were assigned at birth, they say, oh, just, um, just dress differently, just act differently. Like why go through the process of changing your body as well. You know, there are different types of dysphoria. The social dysphoria of people believing I'm a woman and not recognizing me as a man. But I also have physical dysphoria with my own body and feeling that I don't want boobs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what were some of the biggest things that really did make you realize, oh yeah, this is who I am, this is who I've always been? Once I was on T, that first year, I was probably the happiest I've ever been just seeing myself change in all the ways that I had hoped that I would. It's like it taking off a mask and seeing yourself for the first time. Voice, it was like one of the most affirming things ever. Facial hair, huge one. And starting to see like some muscle tone and stuff. Mm -hmm. And like, even in my neck and my face, I was like, it was just like the best feeling in the world. I think I was feeling what most people feel every single day for the first time. <laughs> Is that the hormones going in your yes, legs? Yes, yes, yes it is. I came out to my parents and then like, I don't know, like a month after I started hormones. Your parents were like, whoa. Yeah, Whiplash. I mean, they were like, I... <laughs> <laughs> we're going. There was a lot of apprehension on their end. Yeah. Because when I had come out to them, they didn't even know I was queer. Oh. Yeah. Well, so... you had to come out as straight though. Yeah, well, <laughs> one at a time, one at a time. <laughs> what were some of the most unexpected side effects of transition? The butt hair. The butt hair. <laughs> well, I have still not embraced my butt hair. It's too itchy if I try to shave it. So what's the point of denying it? It's just like, you, you know, gotta accept yourself. You're right, I think I'm just gonna have to accept it. The horniness is so different. <laughs> like as crazy as that sounds, like I yeah. do see why, like there is that like classic thing that like all like men think about sex a hundred times a day because before testosterone, I did not. How many more times a day do you think about sex than you did when you were a woman? Probably like a hundred times more. A hundred times more? <laughs> yeah, like I think about it all the time. I probably maybe once a day, maybe. Mm. And now it's like literally all the time. I still treat women with the utmost respect and I would never hurt a woman. Wait, or... you could be horny and treat people with respect know, at the same time? Right, that's what I'm saying. I'm experiencing every single thing they experience mm. and I still, I'm a great guy. I got teased so bad in middle school called, called like getting all these lesbian slurs. When I was so scared for that to happen again that like I got a boyfriend and I like did everything I was supposed to do. I dressed feminine and I was like, I'm not dealing with that. And that was another thing. I like remember my sisters being like, well, like, why don't you have sex with your boyfriend? And being like, oh, like, so I did that thinking that that was gonna help like show I'm straight and cis and all these things. And then I got pregnant. If puberty felt wrong, pregnancy was puberty on steroids. It wasn't until after 
um, I gave birth that like then it really started hitting me why that was so miserable for me. I felt like I was dying. <laughs> like I remember like my sister had been pregnant really close to me and she was like loving it. And I was like, I do not feel that. Do you think that part of the reason that your sisters were able to enjoy it was because it felt like, uh, you know, part of the process to motherhood, to yes. womanhood? And if I felt so the opposite way, of course that felt so wrong for me. Be, like if you got any man and they were pregnant, they would feel so weird. How has seeing your journey shaped your child's perspective of gender and societal norms. As young as a, a baby, I started doing gender neutral parenting. The problem with that was that they were raised in a split home and they had so many family members that they, everyone else would undo what I was doing. They would come home from like their other parents' house with like Barbies and pink dresses and all these things. So then I had to almost step back a little bit and be like, I don't want to seem like the parent that's then trying to take these things from right. you. So by the time I came out as trans, they were very like not shocked and it yeah. wasn't this like, oh my God, my parents going from a mom to a dad. They were kind of like, yeah, you've always been masculine. You've always been, I thought maybe non-binary or whatever it is. So this actually makes sense. Has your parenting style evolved with your gender? Mother versus father. Like, is there a different way that you parent? Maybe from, if someone was watching it from the outside, maybe they would see subtle differences. Yeah. But I, like I said, I've always felt like this brain was my brain. And I've asked Arlo this. I was like, did you notice a difference? And Arlo was like, no, you're exactly the same. Right. I've asked Arlo too. I've asked like, do you ever miss having a mom? Like now you have two dads. Not at all. You're the same to me. Like you're the same parent, you're the same person. Your outside just matches your inside. Do you feel like you missed out on your childhood as a boy? Definitely. You already feel like you go through a second puberty because of the hormones, 100%. Like I deal with everything like a 13, 14. Your voice started cracking? You name it, Yeah. that's there. We heard a lot about the butt hair. I didn't get that, but like. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky you. I like didn't get very hairy. Like some of my friends have like beards and I'm like, this is the most I can grow. A lot of people would be like, oh, you're so like immature. You act young or like whatever. And it's like, I don't even care when people say that to me. It's like, cause I'm right. finally getting to do things that like I never got to do. How important is it to you to be passable for other people to see you as a man with you haven't even seen anything. The parts of passing that I didn't experience when I was younger, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to have that now, people using, you know, he, him pronouns, mm -hmm. people calling me sir or bro. Bro. <laughs> that means the world. Bruh. Bruh. Is it just as much a mental transition as it could be a physical one? Everything on the inside feels exactly the same. So this this meat bag was wrong. Yeah, the skin suit. <laughs> yeah, I always call it a skin suit because for me, I remember growing up and feeling like literally like I was in a bad costume. Yeah. Like a tight, wrong, ill-fitting, mm. hot, uncomfortable, miserable costume. What's been the most difficult part about transitioning to a man? Mm. You could. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, it's yeah. a lot easier than being a woman, so really? I don't have a lot of complaints. Male privilege is real. It's real? It's real and I've got it. It's real. Male privilege is real. Confirmed. Male privilege is real. Is it real? <laughs> Men and women treat me better. People respect my like thoughts more. That's sad. That's kind of, it's kind of fucked up. It is very fucked up. Nobody like sexualizes me anymore. Or even when I was a lesbian, it was so many straight men being like, oh, lesbians are hot. I also don't feel as like scared walking alone. Even how like, let's say I'm in a group at a party. I think other men will like direct questions and things towards me instead of like the girls next to me. Pretty much everything that I saw when I was a female presenting person and was like, hey, that's not fair. Mm. I'm seeing now from the other side. Do you have any kind of averse reaction when someone uses your dead name? And you know I can't go without thanking BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. Therapy has helped reframe my view of the world and myself by allowing me to feel empathy for my younger self and therefore understand who I am today better. But therapy can be customized to whatever is right for you and can be useful in helping with motivation or feelings of depression, anxiety, stress, insecurity, or whatever else you might need. BetterHelp screens all their therapists to ensure that they have experience and that they're certified and licensed and provides customized therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone or speak over the phone if that's not something that you're comfortable with. As you may have found out by now, therapy can be expensive and the price of finding a therapist that you like and that you actually connect with can be overwhelming, which is why BetterHelp offers a more affordable alternative to in-person therapy where you can start communicating with your therapist in less than 48 hours. So thank you to BetterHelp who are giving I Spent a Day with viewers and listeners of the podcast, uncensored by the way, 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com. That's better H-E-L-P 
youtube.com slash Padilla. Now back to the world of transmit. My dead name was the name that I had before transition. So I chose my name when I transitioned and went and legally changed it. Mm -hmm. But the name that I was given at birth by my parents is my dead name. I think that for me, I see my entire life leading up to my transition associated with that name. To hear it does definitely bring up feelings of the anxiety and the suppression that I felt pretending to be a different person. Mm. So it, it takes me back to that space in my mind and it can be pretty stressful. How important are pronouns to you? Pronouns are everything. And yeah, I mean, honestly, if you don't refer to me as he, him, like, I'll call you out. Mm. You no, know, cause why, why are you, why are you doing that? I've kind of been living a stealth life. So like stealth is when you don't like openly tell people, I guess, that you're trans. I mean, we're on this video. Is there anything you want to say to anyone watching who is finding out for the very first time today <laughs> that knows you in person? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, there's family out there. Bonjour, comment ça va? <laughs> Do you ever get any kind of backlash for your identity? Yes, I mean, so I documented my transition on YouTube. I've had a lot of people seek me out to use as an example against me and against trans people. I was the subject of a book. So she had a whole chapter on influencers and I was one of them that was mentioned as a trans YouTuber. The main idea was that trans guys are the victims of misogyny in society. So we think we can't be women. So we have to transition to men in order to be happy and that it comes in packs, like it comes in waves. If we have a trans friend, there's like some kind of social contagion mm. element to it. Like it is a religion to be converted to. Yeah, exactly. Do you ever get asked, you know, what if this is all just a phase? All the time, online and in real life. In the beginning, a lot. A lot of people think they're just thought about it, like because of what's going on in the world. Right. Like maybe I watched Euphoria or like, mm. you know, whatever it is. And like, oh, it's like, oh, maybe I'm trans. Like, no. What about being in a relationship with someone who is so openly feminine and a woman? Is there any kind of backlash that you get for that? A lot of, there was a lot of really transphobic comments, 100%. And what do you boil that down to? I think those people are deep down so miserable. Cause I'm like, literally, what is your life like that you're sitting at home trying to hurt people on the internet? I mean, it comes from a place of wanting others to feel as bad about themselves as they do themselves. Yeah. So there's really no reason that you would spend that time and energy caring about something that you have no connection to. Yeah, exactly. I always say the same thing. There is absolutely no way that person is happy. So I feel bad for you because I am happy. <laughs> How do you feel about teens transition? Well, I transitioned as a teen, oh, so I'm so a little I biased. That, I think that answers that question. <laughs> I think that there is a ton of conversation being held about the way that they phrase it is kids having yeah. surgeries and going on hormones, which just doesn't happen. You know, if you have a trans kid who's like 11 or 12, the process is difficult. I mean, for me, when I started therapy, he had to make sure that I had been out as a trans guy and had been living as a guy for almost a year before I started. And then after that, it was a referral to, you know, a hormone specialist. And even that's a process. Teenagers, no matter what we're talking about, have a lot of growth and phases to do. So I think anything that's super, super permanent could possibly be no, not the best for like a very young teenager. Mm -hmm. Obviously tread carefully, but um, at the same time, we're literally losing kids to this, to not being able to transition and to not express themselves how they want to. So I do think there's ways for them to do that um, and kind of do it in maybe what I guess you could call baby steps. What about detransitioning? We hear a lot about detransitioners. The thing about detransitioners is that, and I think it's really blown out of proportion. Unfortunately, the most common reason that a person detransitions is because their environment socially is unaccepting and they can't continue to live as a trans person. They have to go back into the closet mm. in order to be accepted, in order to keep their jobs or keep their housing or whatever it is, keep a relationship mm. with their family. Their life is so much worse, not because of how they feel about themselves, but because of how people are treating them for being trans. If you could give a message to your younger self, any advice or anything to you before you fully grasp the fact yeah. that you are trans, is there anything that you'd want to say to yourself? It's not weird 
that you were a girl wanting a mustache. <laughs> You're weird for other reasons, but not for that. You have parents that are supportive and life is gonna be okay. And it's not as scary as you think. What is it about being trans that brings you the most joy? Honestly, this is gonna sound so cheesy, but it's just the community. No matter where you are on the acronym, <laughs> You have a lot of similar feelings and it's just such an easy thing to meet a queer person and just connect. It's just like you can go around a queer person and it's like you've always known them. I spent a day with trans men and one thing that really sits with me is how being taught to suppress something that we so strongly link with our identity can also cause us to suppress the amount of joy that we're capable of experiencing. In order to enjoy life to its fullest, we may need to take a step back and determine which of the beliefs that we have are our own and which were forced upon us. You've so deeply embraced your place within the queer community that you now have a podcast as well, right? Yes, so I have a podcast coming out. Mm -hmm. It's called Questicles. Mm -hmm. It is a chaotic, queer D&D <laughs> podcast. Questicles, you heard it right. Questicles, okay, <laughs> I'm trying to think about the quest mm -hmm. to gain testicles? Well, it's almost like Chronicles and Questicles, so I don't know oh. where your mind is going. I don't know, that's weird. Do you think other people will make that mistake? Oh, let's talk about manhood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs>